In this lesson, we'll cover project information that's contained within your building project. We'll look at first how to set this project information and then how this information is displayed on your sheets within your title block. So this project was based upon the residential template and I can see all the views in the project browser in the lower left that were created. Let's scroll down to the views underneath sheets and double click A1 first floor plan. This will open that view. When I open the view, I see my title block, title marks, and various texts displayed from the properties of this project. Go ahead and zoom in around the lower right portion of the actual title block. Here you can see such things as the owner, the project name, the floor plan, even the actual sheet number and scale. Now project information is things such as the owner or the project name, maybe even the address. Now this information can be changed directly on the title block simply by double clicking the text or we can change all of the information for the project in the manage area. Let's do that. So let's click on the manage tab on the top of your ribbon. After you've clicked the manage tab in the settings area on the left, there's an icon for project information. Go ahead and click it. This will open a new view allowing me to key in information for my company, my organization, for example, of who's building the house, maybe the building name or the residential building name, who the author is or designer of this structure or this building, energy settings, if I wanted to run an energy analysis to see, let's say, how efficient the house is when it comes to heating and cooling. And then you have your other project information below that, such as the date, the status, who owns it, maybe even an address, a name, and a number. And here I could just start to fill this information in. So for my organization name, I could type in whatever my company name is. Organization description, it would be whatever your company does. Building name, I could just call this my house. You can call it your last name in your house if you want to. And the author would be who's actually designing this. That would be your name. Now below is the other information. So the issue date could be the date that this was issued or when it started or when final plans were actually approved. Project status could be things such as it's in work, it's been approved, or it's under review. Owner would be the client, your customer, whoever you're building the residential house for. Now address, there's an edit button. You can click edit, and this would be where you could key in the actual address for this structure where it's being built, such as if I keyed in 12 main, click OK. Project name could be the house name. So in this case, maybe instead of it saying project name, I'm just going to call this house. And then as far as the project number goes, if your company was using a sequential number or some sort of identifier for the project, this would be keyed in here. Now this information relates to some of the information on the title block, such as if I scroll over and I look at the title block on the right, I could see owner is owner. But if I change the owner to maybe I type in you, you know, for whoever you are, that'd be your name. I can type in house for the project name. So the project name would not be project name, it was going to show up as house. And the same thing with project number, issue date, author, and checker. So all of this information, again, can be changed on the title block or changed within this project property view. Now, the other thing I didn't click on was the energy settings. So if you click edit to the right of that, this opens up and allows me to define the type of structure, in this case, building, where your ground sits, specific dimensions for various elements, and how you want this to be analyzed. So here I could see the building type was set to office, but I could actually change that and select the appropriate type of building that I'm building here, in this case, single family, or it may be multifamily, depending upon what you're building. The location, you could define by the location of where this sits in the world. If you click default, you have a little button on the right with three dots. Clicking on that will allow you to define the actual location, meaning the site, or to pick and choose depending upon where you're selecting this from. You do need the internet access to actually select this if you're using the global tracking. Click Cancel. You can also define the other areas, the type of construction, your different types of space requirements when it comes to dimension, and your different types of energy analysis depending upon what systems are being placed inside of the structure. 
With all of this selected and set, just click OK. Now you may say, well, what's all of that used for? Well, that's part of what would be used when you run a building energy analysis from within inside of Revit. It would look at this information, look at the model you built, and then be able to return results to you as to how efficient your building is in the different areas that are being analyzed. But back to the information for the title block. So with this information updated, if you click OK, you'll actually see now your title block on your drawing view, your sheet, updates reflecting what information you've changed in that area. Again, you could change the same information here if you just double click and you could change the text, which would change it back in the other view. So as a review in this lesson, we looked at the different types of project information you can create and track for your building project. We looked at changing that information and once you've changed it, how it updates on your sheets within your title block.